hello, howdy. Today we are back in the new 2023 Toyota Tacoma. It is exactly the same as the 2022 Tacoma. And honestly, that's pretty great because I'm a big fan of what this truck is about. If you're not familiar, the Taco is famed and honestly beloved for just how old it is. These hardy bones have been around for the better part of a decade and for good reason. It's a solid, proven, trusted, reliable, capable platform. Here on Driving, I've done a lot of taco tests over the last two years, and it has consistently come out either on top or damn well close. The reasons for this are quite simple. The Tacoma offers a steady, straightforward powertrain. This three and a half liter V6 has been around since films are black and white. It's certainly not a truck that's in any hurry, and to be honest, even for such large displacement, it's not all that powerful. The three and a half seems pretty undertaxed, putting out 278 horsepower and turning 265 pound-feet of torque. Here in the 4,000 odd pound Tacoma, that's good for a tow rating of six and a half thousand pounds if you're using the right hitch setup. Once you get going, the drive is as trucky as you could want. You still got that solid rear axle on leaf springs, hydraulic power steering up front, slow lumbering persona, and a cabin that is endearingly comfortable with what it is. It doesn't necessarily do that work with the glam of some of its domestic counterparts, but there's a quiet competence to this truck. Take it off-road as we have several times here on driving, and it's a similar story. 29 and 23 degree approach and departure angle make it pretty handy off-road, as do the nearly 10 inches of ground clearance you get. Augmenting that off-road ability is the way that Toyota has tucked all of those delicate bits up in between the frame rails. It's a technique that preserves breakover angle to great effect, though it must be noted also one that raises the floor. And this is one of the things that gives the Tacoma one of its most complained about characteristics, is the odd seating position relative to the floor. Though they've pragmatically raised everything underneath up higher, they've still tried to keep the overall height manageable. This means that your seating position is actually quite low and close to the floor, and your legs sit relatively flat as they prod in toward the pedals. It's almost more car-like than truck-like, and it can take a little getting used to. That said, I'm also not convinced that it's nearly the deal breaker that many folks make it out to be. Yeah, it's a little weird not having your legs bent straight down in a truck, but you get around just fine in cars, and I would take some breakover safety over that comfort any day. If anything, my bigger gripe in the Tacoma is probably its fuel economy, because that old three and a half liter may be undertaxed, but it's still a lot of displacement and a lot of fuel to be burning. I was in the Jeep 392 last week, a 6.4 liter V8, and I thought that was rough, burning up to 18 liters per hundred highway with the roof down. Climbing back into the Tacoma though, I'm not doing much better. So far this week, I've been looking at some 16, 17 liters per hundred combined, which is not great. I should note too that I've had a bit of a rough week and can't say that I've been driving all that adventurously. Those 16 liters per hundred are with a pretty conservative right foot and no payload in here. It's just rough. I should note here that Toyota's Enercan stated ratings are a little better than that. You're looking at 13.8 liters per hundred kilometers city, 11.4 highway, and 12.7 liters per hundred combined. So that's all well and good. We got our old timey Tacoma booping and bopping along, burning all the fuel, slowing down with rear drum brakes in this year of 2023. But the big important news, what really matters here is that you can still get this small truck with a manual. And it's a wonderful one at that. Oh my goodness, I love this transmission so much. I must fess up, I booked it for myself specifically just so that I could row through these gears. Tacomas typically come with a six speed automatic and it's a fine trans. It's not the most efficient one in the game, but it is a solid one. It's a trusted one, you can pull with it, it's cool. More importantly though, if you go with any of the TRD trims, you do have the option of this six speed manual. The way the Tacoma is packaged, the transmission is right down here. That means that you've got no shift linkages, no cables that get stretchy and crappy. You've got no long levers or anything throwing that. It is just a stick that goes straight down into the top of the gearbox. This means that this long lever, well, yes, has a long throw because it's got a long way to reach, feeds from your hand directly into the transmission. When you pull back, you are feeling the shift fork moving those cogs into place. It's fabulous. It's a very teachable transmission with a lot of tactile feedback. You know what's going on if you lean into it, not that you should, but you can even feel the gears humming away. You feel that frequency. It's just wonderful. I really, really appreciate this trans. 
first gear is a pretty short ratio, so you are shifting out of it quite quickly, but you get a lot of torque with that right off the line, which is very important if you're pulling up a boat launch or the like. Working the clutch with that weird angle against the floor can be a little bit awkward to get used to. I find that I've got my foot at a bit more of a sideways angle for comfort, but small potatoes. Notch, it goes in. This is honestly as tight as you will find in most anything short of a Civic Type R. It's just great. In the case of this particular submodel, you can go from the manual to the automatic for a further 1500 bucks. I honestly don't know that I'd recommend that, apart from my sentimentality for manuals just on the whole and how good this one is at being a manual, I think we're reaching a point where the end is in sight. You're not going to be able to get this manual pickup for much longer, and knowing the fan base that the Tacoma has, I think it's worth bearing in mind that values of manual equipped trucks seem likely to climb as collectability does. Toyotas are known for strong resale, and I do very honestly think that specking the manual in one of these, which you can do right the way up the chain, is a good way to get your money back later. You can find more information about specs and pricing in the full written review, but this model here today is the Access Cab TRD Off-Road. Access Cab referring to the sort of one and a half long cab that's got those two three-quarter seats back there that you don't really want to use. They do a little flippy uppy. They're handy if you've got children, but I wouldn't get in the habit of putting actual passengers back there. In the case of this access cab, the turret off-road is actually the base spec, and it's worth noting that you're only gonna find the manuals available on the TRD trim models. This truck here is well near base, and tacos are now starting at 44.6, and that's before you add on nearly $2,000 in delivery fees. It's not crazy for the present market, but it's not cheap either. Now, if you are in the market for one of these bouncy boys, I would strongly recommend checking out some of our previous reviews of the Tacoma on driving.ca. Though pricing and options have been updated, those reviews and comparisons remain accurate, and you can learn a lot in those about the TRD Off-Road, the TRD Pro, and comparisons, notably with the Ford Ranger Tremor and with the Nissan Frontier, which it did actually lose to by a narrow margin on value points. For driving.ca, I am a happy, bouncy L Alder shifting through the gears in a good old taco. I will catch you soon. For more pickup reviews, news, and specs, and all of the other things, be sure to check us out on driving.ca and follow our social media over on Instagram and Twitter.